I just uh, just saw that. Okay, let's just start over. Hi, uh, welcome to today's session, Accessible Open Educational Resources in K-12. We're excited to share with you how you can access free educational resources right within the LMS you already use today. My name is Katie Gallagher, and I'm the Director of Product Marketing for Teaching and Learning K-12 at Blackboard. I'll be serving as the moderator today. Uh, many thanks to Jenny Breister from our K-12 field marketing team who will be supporting this session as well. And we're lucky to have several Blackboarders with us today, including Sarah Len Hart from our business development team. You can always access the session will be recorded at like every webinar in the series. You can search the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series playlist on the Blackboard TV YouTube channel or go to tinyurl.com slash bitsk12. Um, you'll be receiving the recording and the presentation slides after the session. Um, you can also access the recordings, uh, the PDF of the presentation slides within the community group on the new Blackboard community website. We're really excited to move the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series professional learning community from course sites to this new community site. This professional learning community is designed to augment the series and create an avenue for ongoing collaboration and dialogue. Please accept the invitation or um, go to this link to join the new online PLC. We have a lot of great sessions coming up. Um, we actually don't have any sessions next week. We're going to be busy at iNACL. Um, raise your hand if you will be at iNACL's Blended and Online Learning Symposium next week in Orlando. You can use the hand raise feature at the bottom. Oh, great, Hildy. Glad to th we will see you there. Anyone else? Let's see. All right, Virginia will be there too. Virginia, where are you from? Awesome. Oh, great, Hilda. Yeah, I didn't remember seeing you there before. It's going to be a great week. Um, so be sure to come by booth 335. Virginia, where, where, what school district are you from? Oh, you're out in Oregon. Okay, well, we will see you there next week. I'll actually be on site with the team, so hope to meet you in person. Um, John Bergman, Aaron Sam's partner, will be at iNACL next week as well. Aaron will not be there, but he'll be presenting for us the following Monday. In the bit series five ways to get started with the flip classroom so we're really excited about that session we hope you can join us for it on monday november 23rd just before thanksgiving we've got a special treat with cameron parker from sarasota county public schools and then um the week after that we have jenny day from ncvps so great lineup in november you can always go to bbbb.blackboard.com slash k12bits to sign up for any of these upcoming sessions. We're super excited to have both Janine Richardson and Brent Mundy with us today. Janine is a leader on our Q12 Solutions Engineering team, and Brent is our Director of Product Management, um, focusing on content management. So um, I'd like each of you to introduce yourselves now before I hand it over to you for your presentation. Um, Janine, would you introduce yourself first, so share a little bit of your background? Sure. sure. Well, good afternoon, well, good afternoon everyone. everyone. My name is Jason Richardson, and I'm a manager in the K-12 Solutions Engineering Group. I'm really looking forward to spending some time with you this afternoon, really talking about how quickly and easily your teachers are going to be adding a variety of digital content resources that they're going to be able to use to support the instruction that's going on in the classroom. Just to give you a little bit of background information about me, I've been with Blackboard for about two, almost two years now, and I'm coming to Blackboard after spending 18 plus years in the K-12 education system. So most recently, prior to coming to Blackboard, I spent 10 and a half years in Arlington Public Schools in Virginia, and I see some of my Arlington friends are joining the session today. So I want to shout out to them as well to say hello. And I'm just really looking forward to talking to you, and I'll be back on shortly. And I'm going to turn this over to Brent to share some information about himself. Great. Thanks, Janine. Uh, can you give me a quick confirmation that you can hear my audio fine? You sound great, Brent. Excellent. Very good. Thank you, Katie. Uh, so this is Brent Mundy. I am uh, 
based in the Indianapolis office. So uh, I have, have lived here in Indianapolis for uh, almost 15 years now, um, which is kind of a surprising number to, uh, to admit out loud. Uh, but I, I've been in education and education technology for, uh, for a, a, actually all of that time, um, working for both LMS uh, companies, education technology companies, and, and also spent uh, a, a little bit of time at uh, one of the large uh, publishing companies as well. And one of the things that I picked up through all of that experience is uh, actually that content is, is, is a real struggle uh, oftentimes whenever you start looking at the way that it is delivered and managed. And I, I'm really excited today to get into the details of some of the things that, that we've done on the Blackboard side to address that. Um, and also excited to, uh, to see Janine actually demonstrate uh, some of those solutions that we've built out. So looking forward to uh, sharing more details in just a moment. Thanks so much, Brett. Okay, with, with that, I'll happily hand it over to you so we can learn more about accessible open educational resources. Um, I'm going to put a link in the chat to a blog um, that we published last week uh, showcasing this session, but also um, it turns out the session is super timely because the um, U.S. Department of Education announced a new initiative last week uh, called Go Open, um, and the purpose of that initiative is to make freely available or uh, educational resources more widely available and used by all. And there are 10 districts who have already signed on to replace at least one textbook with uh, digital content. So it's a really exciting time um, on, on this topic, and um, I will share that blog link that has uh, more information about that new initiative as well. So with that, I'll hand it over to you, Brett and Janine. Great. Thank you, Katie. Um, and, and actually, some of the things that you just mentioned there, Katie, we're, we're going to hit on right away. Um, because what I want to do is, is get into the details of uh, OER and, and what it is, what it's about. Um, we'll move quickly into talking about our solution for OER that we've created here at Blackboard called Explore. Um, and then we'll move in and spend actually a, a fair amount of time in the demo. Because uh, I want to make sure that as, as we all come away from uh, our time here together today, uh, that, that you've got a good visual representation and a good visual idea of exactly how this solution works alongside your teaching and learning environments and, and connecting all of this great content uh, into those environments. And uh, Janine and I will be really careful to make sure that we've got plenty of QA time at the end, uh, so that way we can answer all the different questions uh, that you guys might have. So Katie hit on uh, a couple of really great things that are happening in the news. And, and whenever we go out and, and we talk to folks or, or we look at uh, some of the things that are happening, OER is coming up in a lot of conversations. Um, I, I just pulled up four links here. Uh, these, are, these are literally things that are happening in the news just in the past few days. Uh, the Go Open launch is something that Katie uh, talked to just a little bit. Um, I, I think a couple of other exciting things in here, uh, the Department of Education uh, has, has announced their first OER advisor. Um, and, and we've talked a couple of times with their new OER advisor. Um, you know, just kind of making sure that, that we're keeping a good bead on um, where OER is going and, and how Blackboard can be involved. Um, the other one that I want to point out is that the solution that we're going to be looking at a little bit later actually had a really impressive milestone uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago where there are now over 100,000 OER resources uh, inside of, of this repository. And we'll show you all the details about how to search for it and, and how to uh, you know how, how, how to get that content uh, down into a teaching environment. And thank you, Katie, for putting all of those links in there. Um, they're, they're also going to be uh, show notes uh, at, at the end of this that will be made available um, on the community site. So so no need to try to jot these things down off the site. Uh, we'll make sure that all of that is connected back into you uh, very efficiently. So whenever we talk about OER, I, I think a good place to start that conversation is actually defining what OER is. Um, because in some communities, open educational repositories are, are simply known by that acronym OER. Um, but one of the things that we've noticed in, in talking with a lot of the different K-12 folks is that they're actually first introduced to OER not by this, this concept or this umbrella uh, you know, sort of idea, but they're introduced through the great organizations that are building and promoting OER. Um, so here are just a few of the different projects that are available today. 
Um, and, and, and I'm sure that some of these are, are, are all of these, uh, you have name recognition with, with you and, and, and those that are in your district. Um, and, and while the, the resources from any of these projects can be used within our teaching and learning platforms, uh, we've actually built out some special integrations with three of these, um, and specifically to call them out, uh, CK12, SAS Curriculum Pathways, and the Khan Academy. And, and Janine's going to show us those integrations and, and what they look like and, and how they work within our systems in just a minute. Um, but first, I, I still need to give you a definition of OER. Um, so a very simplified definition of OER is, is free, openly available educational resources that are generally available in digital form. That, that's my definition of OER. Um, we, we've got a, a much more expanded definition of, of OER below that. Uh, some of the different thought leaders within the community have, have put uh, additional uh, requirements around what, what should be called OER. So you, you can read through each one of those different points there to kind of get an idea of the types of things uh, that you should be able to do with OER. And, and, and think of that as, as kind of a list of, of is this OER or is this not OER. So OER certainly has, has gained tremendous momentum. Um, and, and what we're seeing really is a tipping point uh, where the usage of OER is going to grow even more dramatically. And although OER is often used alongside or, or actually sometimes in lieu of publisher content, it's different from traditional publisher content in some really important ways. And those important ways that it is different, um, OER is free to use, remix, reuse, redistribute. Um, but in, and generally, there's, there's either very low or, or no licensing or, or any sort of copyright license protections on that content. Um, something else is that OER is, is very disaggregated uh, in regards to the different organizations and groups that are creating uh, this content, um, and, and certainly around the tools that are available to discover it. Uh, one of the other things that we see is that OER is not oftentimes well integrated into the LMS, uh, so our, our different learning management systems. Uh, there, there's, there's sometimes a gap there between finding that content and adding that content into the LMS. And, and then the final here is that sometimes OER is actually not well tagged with metadata. Um, and, and specifically what we think of whenever we're talking about metadata are things like grade alignments, um, but probably most importantly to the folks here uh, today, is around standards alignment, and, and whether that's common core standards, or, or maybe you're in a state that's using uh, you know, state standards, or maybe you're somewhere in the transition between those two. Um, you know, sometimes we find OER that does not have that standards alignment uh, as, as part of it. Um, and, and Blackboard definitely recognizes uh, these challenges with OER, and what we've done is built a platform to address those challenges, and, and that platform is called Explore. So the challenges with OER actually are not unique to OER itself. Uh, we see similar challenges with districts that want to manage their own content uh, that are created by teachers. Um, and, and we're familiar with the tools that the teachers use to create that content. And, and oftentimes, that is the learning management system. Um, and, and these tools have some similar limitations. Uh, content developed in one system is not easily ported into another. Uh, it's difficult for teachers in different districts, or, or sometimes we see even in, in different buildings within the same district to collaborate on developing materials. Um, and and it's, 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 it's a challenge there uh, for, from a technology standpoint. Um, and there's no easy way to share content that's developed in one learning management system with another. And even if content is exported and shared, there's not a real good way for any sort of copyright license or any sort of metadata that goes along with that content to survive being imported and exported from one system to another. So what we're left with is, is at best, a, a world of where sharing and reusing LMS content it is one that involves multiple different systems importing and exporting and, and worries about data types and copyright license. Um, so what we've done to address that is uh, by creating this Explore platform, uh, we, we solve those problems by moving the content into the cloud. And, and then using uh, some integrations with some of these great OER sources that I mentioned earlier, and then leveraging some open standards uh, from the IMS, which is a, an education technology standards body, to, to make a very seamless integration between this cloud-based repository 
and the learning management system. So Explore, though, it's a lot more than just a content repository. Um, it, it is that, uh, but it's also an advanced learning object repository. And, and what that means is that you can author and store additional materials, uh, including things like assessments and Dropbox assignments. Uh, it also enables sharing and discovery of educational content. And it doesn't matter if that content was created you know, by teachers in your own district or if it was that was created outside of the district but shared very broadly, or it could be some of that OER content uh, that, that has been purposefully integrated into the system. Um, but the great thing about this is that all of the content can be delivered through your existing teaching and learning environment uh, for a very seamless sort of experience whenever you start thinking about it from the student's perspective. So Explore is not like other content management systems, though. Uh, it, it is different uh, from most file repository systems in, in the sense that it, it's designed to hold those rich learning objects like the quizzes and the discussion forums and the, and the Dropbox assignments. Um, learning objects can also be organized and sequenced into things that we call collections uh, that can represent anything from maybe a week's worth of material or, or a lesson, or, or a collection could actually represent an entire semester's worth of content. And, and while some learning systems do have repositories built in, they are limited to working with that individual LMS environment. Uh, Explore is very different from that because it works with several different LMS environments and, and it uses those open standards that I mentioned earlier to make sure that there is that very seamless integration between all of them. So I know you guys are super excited about seeing Janine actually take us through a, a, a demo of the software itself. Um, but what I'll do is, is just close out with a couple of quick facts about Explore uh, and, and then turn things over. Uh, the first thing I want to make sure everyone knows here is that Explore is uh, available to anyone that licenses one of our teaching and learning environments. And, and I'm just going to make the quick assumption that everyone here today is, is already doing that. Um, so if you don't have Explore turned on, there's no reason you can't just go turn it on. Um, so being able to turn it on is, is something that, that's very uh, easy. It, it's something that we could walk you through. Um, there's also tutorials and, and different uh, and kind of training information about that as well. Um, and, and Explore can be turned on uh, for the free service. There's also a paid functionality available. Uh, the paid functionality it gives you more capabilities, it gives you more storage and, and more control over how the content that you add to the system is, is shared and managed. Um, and, and again, we can talk through that if there, if there are questions there. Uh, but the important thing to note is uh, the functionality that we're going to look at here in, in a moment is all included with that free service level. So everything that you'll be seeing here today is something that you could, again, go turn on and, and start using this afternoon if you wanted. Um, explore. Yep, go ahead. Sorry. Um, yeah, there's one question I wanted to, to raise that came in through the chat, um, but I did want to, to add one thing. Um, many of our K-12 clients are currently on the Innovative Classroom Solution or the Common Core Competency Learning Solution. If you have moved from just a Learn Product License to a Solution License, um, or you license content management, you have the full access to Explore um, that you're mentioning, you know, referring to as paid. Um, most K-12 clients are, are on one of those bundles that includes full access to Explore. Um, so just wanted to add that clarification. Um, and then um, I think you can see the question in the chat, Brett, if you want to address that when it's appropriate. Okay, yep, yeah, absolutely. Great, great clarification there, Katie. Um, so just a couple of other things to, to close out this slide. Um, already mentioned we are that is included in Explore um, from, from the Khan Academy, CK12, and SAS Curriculum Pathways. Uh, the thing that I want to highlight here, though, is that there are many thousands of resources that have been created by the user community. Um, and, and just to reveal some of, the, some of the facts kind of at a, at a deeper level here, out of those 100,000 resources, only about 15,000 or so have been included from those different established OER provi providers. Um, the vast majority of the resources that are inside of Explore have actually been contributed by the community. 
So I, I want to make sure that there is uh, just acknowledgement and recognition uh, that there is a massive amount of community sourced or crowdsourced content uh, that has been built as OER and placed inside of Explore. So while a lot of times we think about OER as something that we go out and we find and then we assume, uh, the other important point here is everyone here can be a creator of OER as well. Um, and, and whether then that's uh, you know maybe us personally or, or maybe we're enabling it at the district level for teachers that are creating content. Um, OER is not just something for organizations to do. Uh, it's something that individuals can contribute to as well. Um, the last thing, and, and, and again, uh, the, the, the massive amount of content and resources that have been added in, uh, there are about 800 clients uh, that have been connected into Explore uh, as, as of today. Um, that number goes up uh, every single day. So as, as we go go on, we'll, we'll keep that number updated and keep you guys uh, yeah, up to date about that. Uh, regarding the question, and, and looking back over here at the chat, uh, and, and Virginia asks, what is in-place versioning? Um, in-place versioning is, is a, it, it's a concept and it's, it's something that whenever you start thinking about traditional file repositories, whenever you're making a, a reference to a file in a file repository, one of the things that often happens is if that file changes, all of the people that are linking to that file, they immediately inherit that change. So if that file was something very simple like an image and, and I'm just putting a, an HTML link to that image uh, somewhere within my course, if somebody changes that image, now all of a sudden it changes everywhere. And what in-place versioning does, and, and the reason why Explore is different, is that what happens inside of Explore, whenever you make a link to a resource, you not only make a link to the resource, but you make a link to a version of that resource. So if the original author of that uh, resource makes a change to it, they're making actually a new version of that resource. And while that new version becomes available inside of the system, assuming that the sharing permissions have been set up that way, the original version that you are pointing to, that you are linking to, does not change. So that, that's a really important concept whenever you start thinking about using other people's content, uh, you want to make sure that it doesn't change, and then it doesn't change without you knowing about it. And what in-place versioning does is protect against that by having a bit more sophistication uh, than, than what you see in a typical file repository. Hopefully that answers the question. If there are follow-up questions or if that sparks other questions, I, I can just go ahead and take those textually within the chat because I, I want to make sure that I get transitioned over to Janine uh, for the, the actual software demo uh, so we can start seeing some of these things in, uh, in action. So with that, I think I'm out here. Yes, um, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Janine. Okay, thank you, Brent. So I'm going to get ready and jump into the Blackboard Learn system. And we're going to talk a little bit about and go through the process of how a teacher would go through to add all of this great content that's now available inside of Explore. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you all. And you should be looking right now, are you all seeing my screen of a fourth grade class? Okay, so in taking a look at this class, it's going to be very easy for your teachers to add content. You're going to be adding content in all of the areas where you add previously. So that's going to be within your content areas. So this teacher is looking for particular materials for math. And so the teacher is working on how can I add some additional resources within my fractions unit of study. And so the teacher is going to go in just like you would before within that particular folder. And you're going to be able to locate that because I'm going to be building content for my students. It's going to be located within that build content area. And so as I, you can see, I'm going to find explore content within the mashup tools. And you will see it there once that has been configured by the system administrator. And we can follow up with you all and we can have some additional questions later if you've got some specific questions about how you turn that on at the system level. So let's go ahead and launch the Explorer content. When a teacher first goes into this particular area, they're going to be presented with a dashboard. 
And there are a variety of things here in which we can go and discover content. And I know Brent spent some time talking about creating content. This is where that area lives in which you have the flexibility to build a variety of different content. And how does this connect to what we're doing in K-12? We've got lots of schools that are doing things such as doing common assessments, building professional learning communities. This is an opportunity for you to use this as a place where you're going to be able to build either a particular resource here, I can build common assessments here, or maybe there's a particular assignment I want across all of the grade levels. This is where you're going to have that opportunity to do that. I know there was a question that came up about versioning and why is that important that it creates a new copy. Imagine that I created a quiz and then I went through and made an edit to that quiz. However, my teammates were using that quiz. Half of my students have already taken it. So I want to keep that validity and make sure that test is still valid so that all those students take that same experience. And the very next quiz, I can choose to have a new version. So I think that's one of those things that's really important and why versioning really stands out. So I want to go through and let's go through and start discovering some content. And as I shared, I was looking for fractions information. So let's take a look at fractions. When I pull up fractions, you can see there are 173 different resources that have come up. And if I take a look carefully, I can see what types of resources are available from the Khan Academy. I can scroll and I can see I've got lots of resources here from the Khan Academy. There may be some other resources, but I know there was a particular resource that I'm looking for. So I'm going to filter and narrow my search. So if I come up to this top right hand corner, I can filter by who was it added that resource. If I know exactly who added it, it will populate the search that way. If I want to narrow my scope by a particular grade level, I can do that and say, I want to find specific you know, resources as opposed to things that make part of an algebra class or a higher level math class even down to a resource type. So I could filter that and say, I only want to see if someone's built a quiz, or I want to see if someone has built a particular lesson. Or I can do it by standards. And that's really where that power of Explore comes in, where you're going to have that integration of state standards as well as common core standards so that you can do a search that way. Or looking by those great tags that Brent referenced, where I can say fractions, fourth grade, all of those tags to be able to look at it. But I'm going to start first by looking at a contributor, because there's a particular lesson that I know that's in there that I want to share. And so I'm going to search by that SAS Curriculum Pathways contributor. And when I filter, you'll notice now I've got all SAS Curriculum Pathways content. And with this content, you can see there's a variety of types of content that's there that lives. So some of these great digital content providers have provided things such as virtual manipulatives, virtual fractions. When I jump over into another sample class for a secondary level, you'll see that you've got the ability to do virtual simulations, maybe some instructional videos. There are a variety of resources that you have available that you are going to be able to add to your class. So it's not just about text, 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 read this article. We're providing some activities for your students to engage in that learning process. But I did want to make you aware of some things about SAS Curriculum Pathways. And that first is it's not just what can I do on the computer. Some of the content that SAS Curriculum Pathways has loaded are resources that will provide you to a particular app that they have created. So imagine if you wanted to extend the learning outside of the classroom, or you have mobile devices deployed across your district for one-to-one -one initiatives. I need an easy way to get my students to this particular app. So this is going to give me an opportunity to add this content directly to my course. 
And by doing that, when I select the add, it's going to know exactly where I am in my class. If I teach more than one class, I can select to add to another course, but I'm just gonna add it to this one course right now. And let's take a look at what happens. So I should get a successfully added, and there it is, content successfully added. When I go back to my course, SAS Curriculum Pathways not only provides access to that particular content, but you'll notice it even brought in content standards. And so I've got the ability to remove the ones that are not you know, specific to my state, but then just leave the ones that are available for my state. And so that does that automatically for you. So that's one less step that the teacher has to take. And when the students go to access that resource, they simply click on the link, it takes them to this resource so that they can then download that particular app. So all about efficiencies, and this can be added so that you have a title and you have some information for the parent to talk about how you want them to use this resource. So I did want to make you aware that there are a variety of components that you are going to be able to access not just, you know, particular text and things like that. So it's going to be multiple resources that you're going to be able to add. So let's jump in now to a high school level, and let's take a look at some other things that we're going to be able to do. So I did want to make you aware, again, that content is K-12, so you're going to see elementary as well as secondary content, and we go through that same process. So this class is a secondary biology class, a ninth grade class, and the teacher is working in that area, so she's not quite ready for the students to access it, but I want to build the content in that particular area. So again, I go through that same process. I select my build content, and I'm going to navigate down to explore content. I can do those same keyword searches. And I've got some additional content that has now come up. Content from SAS Curriculum Pathways. We've got some content here from the Khan Academy, CK12. There are even lots of resources that have been provided that are Georgia Virtual School resources. So AP content. AP content, the standards are exactly the, the same all over the country. And so if you've got some teachers that are teaching AP courses, I highly recommend that you go here and do some searches because you're going to find some really good content that your teachers are going to be able to utilize. And so this resource, as you can see, has essential questions built into it. There is an actual audio file that talks about what the student is going to be doing within that particular module unit of study. It is set up and designed in a way where the handouts are made available to the user. And this is where I go to find out all of that good information about this content. So if I click on the About information, as I'm using this content, I can go through and I can rate this. And this helps other teachers as well when we start thinking about rating content. So if we've got a lot of teachers using it and it's great content, give it the five stars so that it comes up as this is a great piece of content that you may want to actually use. This is also the area where it's going to show you appropriate grade levels. I can see all of the tags. So if I had searched by AP Biology, this content would have shown up. Same thing with cellular respiration, photosynthesis. It's all going to show up if I use these particular tags. But I also have the ability to go through and even add standards. So if I wanted to go through and say, oh, I know there's a particular state standard that I need to tag this content. With your Explore, you have the ability to say what standards you want available within your account so that you can go through and realign content. Why is that important? Think about all of the content that we teach. Everyone teaches biology. Everyone teaches photosynthesis that teaches biology. 
just because something is aligned to the Virginia standards does not mean that it doesn't apply to me. So if I live in a state where it's common core standards, I can now go and find that particular standard and realign it so that it makes sense to what I'm doing within my class and it's aligned to my particular goals. So I've got that flexibility to be able to do that as well. Some other areas, I showed you how to quickly add things, but let's say, for example, I'm building a collection of resources. So I know, for example, I want to use this year in and year out. So not necessarily directly at the course, but I can go through, I can add a particular collection. So I can say, I want to add this for AP Biology because I know next year I'm teaching this particular class. And so that's going to now be available for me to add that content there. And so you've got not only the ability to add it to your actual class you're teaching, but have it as part of your collections so that you've got a place to go back from year to year to kind of revisit and take a look at where, you know, what you're teaching and planning for the future. So I know I'm teaching it next year, but it may be mid-year. I'm going to start collecting those resources because I found really good content there. And I can even add a folder here to say, okay, this is going to be part of photosynthesis. And now that collection is available for me. And so as I find additional resources for that class I'm going to be teaching next year, I can go through, I can add that content. One more thing that I did want to show you as well is we've got the ability to have channels. And channels, think of this kind of as a place where CK12 may put all of your content together. In thinking about the district level, this is a great place where a district can say, this is the Department of Instruction channel. And then for each of the collections, you may have a math elementary collection, a math secondary collection, an algebra one collection, where that curriculum supervisor can then say, ooh, I found this great resource. I'm gonna add it to that particular collection that's part of that channel. And we've got some of that, and you can see that folks are starting to add channels. And we're seeing quite a bit of that in our community college systems, but this is something that can apply as well to K-12. Why not have a district channel where your curriculum supervisors or your lead teachers are adding some of that great OE content, OER content to that channel so that all teachers can then go and subscribe to that channel. So they're going to be aware of any time there are new updates. So let's take a look at one, and I believe there was one for CK12. There it is, CK12 Education. They created all of their content and added it as part of a channel. So all of their resources are together as part of that channel. I can choose to subscribe to this. So what it's going to do for me as a user, anytime there is new content available, it's going to let me know. How many of you are familiar with CK12 content? Anyone out there familiar? I can't see the chat. Yes? Okay, good. This is some really great high content STEM education content. They have digital textbooks, digital resources. All of these things are in Explore. So you have the ability to add this content directly to your classes or to those particular channels within those collections so that your teachers can use these great resources. So I want to pause because I know we're at about 1241 to see if there are any questions. Oh, I know you guys aren't shy. No questions at all? So what are your thoughts then? Um, okay. Tell sorry, me. Sorry, I've got a question, Janine. Okay. Uh, this is Katie. Uh, mm -hmm. You started the demo with something that blew away. 
somewhere between, um, somewhere over the last 12 months, I completely missed the enhancement that um, standards alignment explore come seamlessly into learn when you pull content in. I was wondering if you, Brett, you or Brett could speak to kind of the extent of that, um, as especially with the OER content um, providers that you mentioned before, Brent, can you speak to which ones are already aligned to standards and how much benefit that provides to using the Explore? Sure, absolutely. Um, so the, the standards that are available in Explore, I'll, I'll start there and then talk about the connection between Explore and, and Learn. Uh, the standards that are inside of Explore are actually all of the individual state standards, and, and that, that includes states like, like mine in Indiana where we, we have our own standards, um, and, and also the, the legacy standards. So I, going back all, all the way into the, the, the lower 2000s, uh, different versions of those standards. So in some cases, you actually find two or three versions of the state standards uh, for each individual state. And, and then, of course, Common Core is there as well. And, and our thought behind including all of those different standards, and, and Janine mentioned this a bit earlier as well, is that content made in, in one state, even though it's aligned to a particular state standard, very likely has, has a high applicability to another state, e even though the standards are going to be different. Um, algebra is going to be algebra. Um, the, the concepts may be segmented and, and they may be tagged up and, and aligned in different ways, uh, but the concepts themselves are, are not going to change from state to state. So by having all of those different state standards there, the tagging of those resources to those particular state standards uh, is actually something that individual users can do. Um, so like Janine was showing, you might be able to find a resource that, that is very applicable to your state, uh, and, and you want to go ahead and put those standards on those resources, uh, which you can do through the, uh, the metadata editing. And whenever you add that resource into your local learn instance, if you also have uh, the particular standards that you're using inside of Explore loaded inside of learn, and, and we made sure that there was a one-to-one -one between all of those, um, those standards actually show up whenever you add the resource. So what that does is ensure that the standards alignment is transferable between the two systems. Um, the other thing that it does, and, and this is where uh, the, the, the fun comes involved, is that Explore, in addition to those uh, lessons and, and some of the different reading materials, uh, you can also have things like quizzes and, and, and assignments that generate a grade. So whenever that grade is generated and, and, and whenever it gets passed back into the gradebook, that standards alignment is also recognized. So you, you can really expand on what you're able to do with the standards alignment um, and, and really concentrate that in, inside of Explore and, and, and trust and know that it gets, uh, it gets passed in the LMS as well. I think that's critical for K-12 teachers because if I'm doing taking the time to align that content within the Blackboard Explore system, now it's coming over Think about all of the reports that your teachers are using. So whether they're looking at the reports to document student achievement so that they can look at, you know, how are they mastering the standards. And definitely you guys should stay tuned because we've got a great new functionality that's coming out about goal performance and having a dashboard to look to see how students are performing. All of those things are going to be able to tie together with these resources that are coming through from Blackboard Explore. So it's going to be that great picture to tie everything together quickly and easily. So Janine, you beat me to the punch there. I was just going to say, um, what, could you give us a little sneak peek? I know we kind of took a little tour this morning. Can you give a, and I know it's not fully built out yet. Can you give a little sneak peek of the um, goal performance dashboard for the teacher for an individual student? Sure. Uh, um, we have a release planned for later in Q4 for Learn 9.1, um, the Learn 9.1 uh, 2015 Q4 release. And one of the major highlights of that planned release is this goal performance dashboard. It's going to be available for teachers and for students. And it just takes competency-based learning to the next level. Um, and I'll also provide another little teaser here. The other thing planned for this release 
Um, can you guys, by a show of hands, show me who on the call uh, uses PowerSchool as your SAS in your district? Anyone on the call, PowerSchool district? Ooh, silence. Everybody? Well, PowerSchool, about 50% of K-12 districts use PowerSchool. So um, the next phase of our PowerSchool integration, we released it for our Learn Saturdays in um, the April timeframe. In this next release for Learn 91, the PowerSchool integration will be available for all Learn 91 customers. And then the third phase of that integration is working with all SISs. So even those of you who did not raise your hands, um, that is not planned for Q4, but that's the next phase of that integration. So the two big things for K-12 in this next release are the goal performance dashboards and PowerSchool integration. So go ahead, Janine. Okay, so we're in the area within the course for the goal performance dashboard, and it's going to show up within the class tools. The district is going to be able to set proficiency levels, and you'll see there's a great, you know, green, yellow, red, and you're going to be able to determine what those levels are by the district to determine those, so that as you are aligning your content to standards, and as students are completing work, you're going to be able to see where is that student. This student is currently within the foundational level within this particular standards of describing cell parts and functions. And you can see there's a variety of resources that the teacher plans on using to assess the student performance on this particular standard. So as the teacher goes through and grades these particular items, this is going to change. And so I'm going to be able to see whether or not does Aiden know the standard well, or do I need to go back and reteach this particular area? And so anything that you align, and that's where it's gonna be really critical with that content that's coming over from Explore with the content with those standards, it's going to populate here. And the one thing that I did wanna make note that I did not show you is when you are working inside of Explore, if you are bringing over an assessment or if you're bringing over a video, you can do more than just video. How many of you guys knew that with these resources, anything that you add, you can add a collaborative area? And so not only do I want my students to watch this video, but now I want to engage and have a discussion. So as the teacher, I wrote a prompt on what I want the students to do. I want you to watch the video, but then I also want you to collaborate in this discussion to talk about what role do I play as a host in the life cycle of a virus. Again, getting opportunities, yes, I can bring in those materials. I want the students to engage in the learning process. So adding that one extra element is providing that, taking the student from being that passive learner to now I'm engaged in the learning process. So some really good things coming, but I did want to show you that as well. But the goal dashboard is something that's going to be critical for schools. You're going to love being able to take a look at this to document student mastery over time. So I'm going to open the floor for any additional questions. Did anything else show up for questions? Let's see. I'm not seeing any additional questions at the moment, but please keep them coming in through the chat. Um, go ahead and, and do our final couple slides here in just a second. Um, but if we have additional questions, um, keep them flowing. Um, Brent, uh, Janine, did you have any slides you didn't go through yet? Okay, okay, I thought we had gone through those. Okay, so wanted to thank everyone for participating in today's um, K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series session. Um, please let me know if you're interested in presenting in the future or if you have ideas for topics that you would like to see in upcoming sessions. You can always reach me on Twitter at one Katie Gallagher or by email there on the slide. You'll be receiving today's recording. The presentation slides will be available in the community site PLC. So don't forget to sign up and join. 
Um, it is designed to augment the series and create an avenue for ongoing collaboration and dialogue amongst Blackboard Key 12 um, users. So please join us again on Monday, November 16th with Aaron Sands, Flip Classroom Pioneer. And be sure to go to bbbb.blackboard.com slash k12bits to register. Thanks so much, everyone. And looks maybe like we have one other question. Oh, yes, one other question here. Um, what additional OER resources should be added to explore in the future? So this is a question for participants in the room. Uh, we covered some OER resources that are already available in Explore from user-generated content to CK12, SAS Curriculum Pathways, and Khan Academy. Are there any other o OER providers out there that you would like to see and explore that we should be talking to? So with that, you can you know, add your suggestions in the chat. Uh, but with that, thank you for taking time out of your Friday. And we look forward to the next session on November 16th. Thanks, everyone.